Yo! Hello Dragonfly Swarm! Beto is a situational yet very powerful 4-star Electro character that was designed to carry your team's damage output from off the field, and boy does she do that well. Her kit isn't explained very well in the game, so over time a lot of players have developed construed opinions and claims about Beto, a lot of which simply aren't true, and yeah, aren't doing her justice. So in this video, I'm gonna explain everything you need to know about Beto in 3.1 Genshin Impact, including the intricate details of her kit, her constellations, her best artifacts, weapons, and the flashy new teams she can work with thanks to Dendro as well as other stuff. Before I start though, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing as it would very much help my channel out and only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. Anyways, alright, let's begin by talking about Beto's talents. To start this off, Beto's normal attack talent is pretty mediocre and actually isn't something I'll be discussing much in this video since I'm not covering on-field Beto playstyles although they are viable. But it's essentially a 5 hit combo that Beto performs and it isn't horrible but doesn't complement in her off-field carry play style at all, so unless you specifically want to play her as a main DPS or an on-field driver, you can ignore this talent. As for Beto's elemental skill though, there's a press version and a hold version, and yes, this skill happens to be that famous ability you've probably seen where she counters an enemy's attack and deals HUGE PP damage. Essentially, when Beto presses the skill, she simply slashes in front of her, dealing electro damage to enemies and generating two particles. But when you hold the skill, she holds her claymore in front of her, generating a shield for as long as she holds, and during this time, when an enemy strikes her, she's gonna charge up a stronger version of her slash, and up to two enemy strikes can empower her slash. There are a few things to note about this interaction. Number one, the more successful your counter, the bigger the damage, but also for each additional level of your counter, Beta will generate one more particle. That basically means that if an enemy hits you once while holding the skill, you'll generate one extra particle for a total of three, and if you're hit twice, you'll generate two extra particles for a total of four. Also, thanks to Beto's first ascension passive, if you time the counter perfectly with when she she's hit, she'll instantly charge up her maximum counter, and this allows you quite a bit of skill expression with great reward if you can practice the timing. By contrast though, unfortunately Beto's fourth ascension passive is relatively useless for the playstyles I'll be covering, but it's still an interesting buff for performing perfect counters, and will provide a more practical experience if you choose to play Beto as an on-field DPS. But finally, for Beto's elemental burst, Beto's burst is deceptively strong, and actually allows her to have ridiculously high damage output in the right situations, but it's also also weird because in single target it falls off by a very significant amount. Essentially her burst causes twin dragon thingies to float around your active character for 15 seconds and during this time normal or charged attack damage that lands on enemies will trigger a lightning arc that bounces from that enemy to multiple others and this can trigger roughly one time per second. Because of the way it functions this burst thrives in combat against exactly two enemies since the lightning arcs can just bounce back and forth for ridiculously high shredding potential but it's still extremely potent in crowds as well. At C0, each lightning arc can hit exactly three times, once on the first enemy and then two more times as it bounces. And do keep in mind that the burst does have a very expensive energy cost, which can cause problems if your energy needs aren't properly accounted for, but I'll discuss more in detail about those issues later. Oh, by the way, Beto's burst does also grant a very large damage reduction bonus to your active character while the burst is active, which in tandem with her C1 shield and other forms of survivability allows for quite a bit of comfort, which is kind of surprising since she's not really supposed to be a utility character because, you know, she deals absolutely insane damage, so that's just weird, but what? Anyways, yes, damage reduction. Altogether, Beto's abilities work to make her a very efficient off-field carry, and although she does suffer from being pretty much permanently a situational character, she absolutely dominates the scenarios that she works in, aka AoE scenarios. So the next thing I want to discuss is another quite relevant topic, the value of her constellations, many of which are extremely strong. Beto's constellations provide quite a few upgrades to her playstyle, and although she's functional at C0, she becomes significantly stronger with these constellations. Beto's C1 is relatively nice because it now grants your active character a shield when Beto casts her burst, but the shield itself is quite weak and will usually break pretty quickly. However, the shield does benefit from Beto's damage reduction bonus as well as other bonuses such as Syncho's damage reduction, so it can help to create a nice boost of survivability. However, Beto's C2 is a very, very powerful constellation, not just for Beto, but honestly in general. This will allow her lightning arcs to bounce a total of 5 times instead of 3, significantly increasing her burst damage output as well as her electro application 
constellation, which is quite important nowadays as we all know, thanks to Dendro. It's a very simple constellation, but yet ends up being a huge upgrade for Beto, so if you can get this constellation, you'll find a lot more value from Beto in total. C3 adds three levels to Beto's skill, which, eh, there's not much else to say about that. It's extra scaling for her counter, and that's about it. But Beto's C4 is honestly kind of weird as well. It's not necessarily a bad constellation, but many players won't get to enjoy it since her most popular playstyle is that of an off-field carry. However, if you are running on-field Beto, C4 is notable. At C5 though, Beto gets three extra levels for her burst, which is very nice for the scaling and will provide a pretty big DPS increase in total, so definitely more valuable than her C3. But finally, at C6, Beto's lightning arcs from her burst now shred electro resistance, which despite being such a simple constellation for C6, is very nice. Given how easy it is for her burst to bounce around once she has C2, it's very easy to shred multiple enemies of their electro resistance for herself and for her team. And in that regard, this constellation gains a lot of value in teams where Beto isn't the only one capitalizing on the resistance shred. So double electro, mono electro, and aggravate teams especially will very much enjoy this upgrade. But all in all, almost every one of Beto's constellations are valuable in some way, but I'd say your biggest goal should be C2 for the massive DPS increase, C5 for the slightly less dramatic but still swag burst damage increase, and C6 for the strong offensive utility Beto provides to herself and her team. Alright, we are moving on to artifacts, and there are some things that need to be said because I've been seeing a small handful of people advocating for some of these new artifact sets, and uh... Well, we will get there when we get there. To start, Beto likes artifacts that provide dramatic increases to her already very high personal damage output. And this doesn't change with new Dendro teams. Her builds still need to be tailored towards her own damage. However, now that Dendro exists, she has many more viable and quite fun options to work with. The first set I want to mention is Four Piece Emblem, because in many cases, this will be Beto's best set. It provides her with the perfect amount of energy recharge and energy incentive to fund her burst while also providing a nice burst damage bonus. And this bonus is significant for Beto since such a scary amount of her damage output comes from her burst. But in general, th think of it like this. The more energy recharge your Beto needs, the more valuable this set becomes over other options. But the less energy recharge you need, the less valuable it becomes over other options. And she has quite a few other options when you factor Dendro now, one of which being 4-piece Thunder Soother. Thunder Soother is kind of a difficult set to work with for Beto because the damage bonus requires you to maintain Electro Auras on your enemies. But luckily, with Beto's good Electro application, it actually won't have a bad uptime in Taser and Quicken teams. Thus, if you're running Beto in either of these teams, this set can actually outperform 4-piece Emblem. But it's still, like I said, a little difficult to work with since Beto's damage output would rely on maintaining Electro Auras on multiple enemies at once, you know, since multi-target is where she thrives. That's why you'll instead see a lot of people running 2-piece 2-piece combos if they're not running 4-piece Emblem, because any combination of 2-piece Thundering Fury, 2-piece Noblesse, 2-piece Emblem, or 2-piece Attack sets can provide competitive benefits with her 4-piece options, if the substats are good enough, and they don't require any conditions to to function, so they're easy to work with, but also boring. I do want to mention that I have seen other theory crafters and communities such as Beto Mains and KQM talk about 4-piece Thundering Fury being viable in aggravate teams, but you would generally only do this A for fun and B for more energy generation and potentially a lot of on-field perfect counter damage. But one thing I do immediately have to shut down is 4-piece Gilded Dreams. To be fair, I don't see many people saying it's good on Beto, but I have seen it said, and it's not true. 4-piece Gilded Dreams is best on characters that genuinely need elemental mastery, such as for example, Kuki Shinobu, who not only scales with EM, but also needs it for Hyperbloom damage, which dramatically scales with EM and character level. But Beto can't trigger Hyperbloom consistently at all, and most other Electro-related reactions either don't need Beto to run EM, or just aren't practical to work with, and yes, that includes Aggravate, because while Aggravate does scale with EM, it's not by that much, and especially not enough to warrant sacrificing Beto's personal damage for her reaction damage, so Gilded Dreams on Beto is very much a no-go for most situations. But anyways, Moving on to artifact stats, I want to first talk about her main stats, which 99% of the time the best options are an Electro Damage Goblet, a Crit Circlet, and an Attack Sands. However, with the Sands, you can get away with running an ER Sands if your energy threshold isn't met. But Beto's threshold is surprisingly low in the right scenarios, so you'd actually be wasting potential damage by running ER over Attack Sands. For example, when Beto is the only Electro unit in the party, she generally needs upwards of 180% ER, which actually would warrant using an ER Sands, especially with the Emblem for 
four piece bonus. But if you're running her with another electro unit, which is what will end up happening most of the time, her energy requirement is actually more like around 140%, meaning you'd be way overkill by running an ER sans over an attack sans. In general, it just depends on your circumstances, but both main stats are viable. And as for sub stats, as always, you're gonna wanna focus ER first and foremost to meet Beto's threshold, then focus on crit sub stats to maintain a good crit ratio, which is especially valuable for aggravate damage, then you can focus attack percent and finally EM substats, which are typically more enjoyable in dendro or overload teams than in other teams. Okay, so now we gotta talk about the weapons, and Beto has a pretty interesting pool of viable weapons, a lot of which have shifted around in value because of the new dendro meta, so I'm gonna discuss in relatively soft order from strongest to weakest, starting with Serpent Spine. I wanted to mention this weapon first because it happens to be one of Beto's best weapons, even before 3.0, but now with aggravate teams, this weapon is just unfair. It's very powerful at R5, but even with less refines, it still goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with her 5-star options and remains as a very powerful claymore to pick up. Again, Serpent Spine is at its strongest in aggravate teams and in teams where you can give Beto big attack buffs, but even outside of that, it's one of her strongest weapons to go for overall. However, if you have them, you can also go for weapons like Wolf's Gravestone or the Unforged, and I'm pairing these weapons together because although Wolf's Gravestone is quite a bit stronger and one of Beto's best weapons, they're both strong options because they provide Beto with a lot of attack stats, and so overall, they're strong options if you have them and you don't have Serpent Spine, but they're going to fall off if your beta is already getting big external attack buffs. And also, since Aggravate doesn't scale at all with a character's attack, they won't be as valuable as other options in Aggravate teams either. Redhorn Stone Thresher can be a very strong option for Beto, thanks to the huge crit damage bonus, but it will still generally fall behind my aforementioned recommendations because Beto doesn't make use of the weapon passive. Still though, it's a pretty decent weapon, and it's especially notable in Aggravate since it helps her build a good crit ratio. But another interesting option is Akuomaru, which can be one of Beto's strongest weapons up there with Serpent Spine if your team's bursts are expensive, but even outside of that, it's a very respectable weapon with high refinements. It just happens to be expensive as sh** because it's exclusively a limited weapon. Other weapons Beto can use if you're limited on options though are weapons like Skyward Pride, which can be decent if you really need to fund Beto's energy, but there's also Luxurious Sea Lord if you have it, and it's one of Beto's best free-to-play options, even beating out Prototype Archaic, but if you don't have Sea Lord, you can just use Archaic. And I do have a slight disclaimer for my last weapon options. Elemental Mastery is usually not great to focus heavily on Beto, even in aggravate teams, because her aggravate damage isn't as important to her as her own personal damage. Therefore, you're better off building for crit and whatnot rather than building specifically for EM, but regardless, weapons like Rain Slasher and especially the new Makaira Aquamarine Claymore can be pretty good on her, outperforming most of her less expensive weapon options thanks to the functionality of Aggravate. But just to clear the air, it has less to do with the bonus EM on the weapons and more to do with their very nice passives that Beto can capitalize well on. And the final thing we gotta talk about with Beto in 3.1 is her teams, which have been seeing a lot of new options recently, not just with Dendro teams, but with newer character releases as well. So in the team section, I'm gonna briefly discuss each team archetype that Beto works with, talk about their general strengths, and how they work. Starting with Beto quicken teams, because it's not how you might imagine. As I've said throughout the guide, Beto herself doesn't enjoy aggravate as dramatically as other electro DPS units, but she does still enjoy it, and she happens to work really well in a lot of quicken teams as an off-field DPS, but also technically as an enabler and survivability unit with the help of her C1, C6, and damage reduction from her burst. As of 3.1, some of the strongest Beto quicken teams you can work with are those with, for example, Beto another Electro DPS, a Dendro unit, and a Flex character for the fourth slot. Characters like Sino fit really well into the Electro DPS slot since Beto's burst lasts so long. This allows Sino to get much more value out of his own very long field time, but it also allows him to fund energy back to Beto quite efficiently so that cycle can repeat over and over. But characters like Fischl or Yaimiko or Kuching can take the Electro DPS slot for their own aggravate damage as well. The Dendro unit in these aggravate teams can be Kolei, but you'll probably find more comfort with Dendro Traveler because of their practicality and long field uptime. And as for the flex spot, you'll usually want to bring in a healer or a shielder so that you can at least have some form of reliable survivability. Therefore, characters that don't interfere with quicken reactions such as Jean, Kuki Shinobu, Zhongli, etc. can work really well to round out the team. But if you're clinically insane, you can instead use this slot for more offensive units like Sucrose, Kazuha, Venti, etc. And the whole point of quicken teams is to maintain steady dendro and electro applications so that the enemy is constantly quickened, so then your dendro damage, and more importantly in this case, your electro damage, is being amplified every time your teammates trigger aggravate and spread. It is a very offensive team archetype, and Beto just happens to enjoy the amplified damage output. However, another dendro team style that Beto works absolutely amazing in, for the weirdest reason, is hyperbloom teams. The thing about hyperbloom teams is that you usually only want one electro. Electro unit because having two would randomize which one is triggering. Triggering. <laughs> 
Having two electro units would randomize which one is triggering Hyper Bloom, which would suck. But the cool thing about Beto is that her burst actually doesn't touch Bloom Seeds at all when bouncing around enemies. So she can actually introduce a double electro Hyper Bloom team without randomizing the Hyper Bloom damage at all. So in this team, you'd usually run Beto, an electro reaction carry, a dendro unit, and a hydro unit. Raiden and Kuki Shinobu are by a long shot your best options for the reaction carry slots since they're so good at triggering Hyper Bloom and they work well building entirely into EM. And for the dendro unit, you will again probably enjoy Dendro Traveler more than you'll enjoy Kole because good Dendro application, well, consistent Dendro application is very important in this team. And for the Hydro unit, you can slot any number of good Hydro applicators such as Yellon, Singcho, Kokumi, etc. But I really recommend Singcho. Singcho works well with Beto in general because their damage reduction combined makes your active character extremely tanky. And therefore, the team becomes much less of a headache to work with. Plus, Singcho still provides a lot of personal damage alongside Beto. So it's a very strong and very easy team style to run with. But one of the main points of Beto being in this team, aside from not stealing hyper blooms, is that she provides super high off-field electro damage and is able to fund her burst much easier thanks to electro resonance. But Beto is obviously very strong in quite a few other team styles as well, such as taser teams where you would use characters like Fischl, Sucrose, and Singcho to help create a massive pile of reactions on enemies. But there are quite a few variants of taser teams that Beto fits very well in. And in general, Beto can work for any number of characters that don't mind the reactions she's going to trigger in the process of dealing her massive off-field damage. So things like overload teams, over vape teams, etc. can all see pretty strong play with Beto as well. And yes, Beto can flex as a main DPS or an on-field driver for some teams, but as I said earlier, it's not something I'm going to discuss in this guide but since it is unfortunately just objectively less powerful than running Beto as an off-field unit. Not that that's a bad thing at all. Do not write in the comments. I'm just shooting for simplicity, and I hope I shot well because this video is over. If you enjoyed the guide or it helped you in any way, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and also join my Discord server because reasons. Okay, goodbye.